Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. As ever you can find me over on Instagram at the House of Langford and at Over of Sews. You can also find me on Ravelry as at Mad X Stitcher. We are now into May. Only by a few days but nonetheless we are in May. We have now been in lockdown for maybe six weeks can't actually remember just see how it goes i guess so i'm hoping you're all keeping well and safe and um i'm going to let you know show you what i have been getting up to over the last month as clearly i've got lots of time on my hands <laughs> so i have been digging through a lot of my whips and just finding things really that have been started many 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 years ago um, and just working through those to try and get them finished so that I've got um, just a little bit of closure I guess on things that should have been finished a very long time ago most of them being cross stitch projects because I haven't cross stitched in quite a few years um, especially since I started doing my teaching degree and so it's nice just to finish stuff off so I'm going to show you all the cross stitch stuff I've been getting up to first then I'm going to show you some sewing projects I've been working on and finally some random bits and bobs that I've also been doing as well. And at the end I've got some whips and I've got some acquisitions. So let's get cracking. So first things first, I have been cross stitching a lot. I've also been recording some tutorials for some projects as well including some cross stitch pieces so that means i've got a couple of beginners tutorials on my channel which you might have already seen and um, the first one was using this kit so it's just one color it is a monogram letter m the kit is from hobbycraft and it is designed by mouseloft.co.uk i have completed the one that comes with the kit and um, so this is the one i've done in during the tutorial and what I have done since is use the same whatever's left over in the kit to make another one. So I've used a different type count fabric. So this one is using 14 count fabric. So you get 14 stitches to an inch. And this one uses 18 count fabric. So you get 18 stitches to an inch. And another difference is that I've used two threads to stitch each of these crosses and one thread to stitch each of these crosses. So you have the difference in size and coverage in terms of how many stitch uh, threads that you use to complete your stitches. So that is the first one that I have done so far. The second one that I then moved on to was this one. So it's a little cupcake. It has two colours for the base of the cupcake, two colours for the frosting. You also have the red in the cherry and the white for its shiny part at the top. And then you've got some black outline as well. Now again I've done the same thing as I did with the monogram. I have completed the one that came in the kit which uses the 14 count Ada. And then I have completed another one using the same threads out of the kit. So there's still loads left over um, to create one on the 18 count fabric. So again you can see they're slightly different in size. And again this one uses two threads and this one uses one. So there will be a video coming up shortly. On the comparisons between fabrics and all the different types of ways of using your threads. Once I had finished the first one, the monogram letter, and completed my tutorial for it, I then went on to work on some other projects that I had, which are a little bit bigger, and I have so far completed three of my very old whips, as well as an embroidery piece. So the first one is this Teddy Witch. Now I think I may have shown you this as a whip on the last podcast which was for March. Um, this one is now finished and I have put this year's date in the bottom corner down here um, just to show that that is when I finished it and you can see that it's got a witch wearing a little hat. She's got a red cloak with some green stars and moons and she's using a cauldron to boil up some trouble. So that was the first piece that I finished. I then picked up another one which was this Care Bear. So I have 
the this one was pretty much pretty much already done so the whole of the care bear itself was complete and i had the outline the purple for the smile at the very bottom and since then i have filled in all of the colors on the bottom added in the share a at the top so the other lettering and the hearts around the outside as well now it took me a little bit longer because i wasn't sure how i was going to finish all the edges on the words mainly because there's no outlining for them um but i'm really pleased with how this one came out the last one then was this oriental scene that i had now again there was a lot of this already completed and as it's all whole stitches so there's no half stitches there's no speciality stitches in it at all there's no outline in it at all um this one didn't take very long at all it's mainly just the counting um that i struggled with there is one mistake in this just like there is a mistake in the witch as well um not deliberate in either of them it's just purely because i could not undo so much work to get back to it there is one square that is wrong in both of them but you can't tell the difference so i don't mind anyway this is from a an issue of cross stitcher magazine from i believe 2005 i think it's 2005 i will double check um majority so the pagoda the, yeah the pagoda in the middle this was already finished the majority of this background was finished as well with the pink and i think i had the lime green already in as well um so i've had to add the white into the mountains there was some forest section down here to do and all of the framework as well as the minty color at the top um, and all the flowers so that has come out really well and the back doesn't look too bad either check that out that's one of the neatest ones i've ever done okay, so the embroidery piece that i finished was the one i started at the stitch festival um in what was that february now no the very beginning of march wasn't it um so i have now finished that as well so that is this one it uses all different stitches you've got some um french knots there's some back stitching in there there's some satin stitching there is lazy daisy as well um and it just uses different colors of thread and i'm very pleased with that actually my neat knots at the bottom are not all that neat however the green ones around the top are so i'm not the quite happy with that and then what i've actually done is changed so the circle the center of these orange flowers is supposed to be a french knot as well i think but i've just done lots of crosses over the top of each other just to build it up a little bit more um and that is a design available in the new love embroidery magazine moving on to sewing now so whether that is hand sewing not necessarily embroidery or cross stitch um and some sewing machine pieces as well some, some machine pieces um for i had a lesson just before we broke up for easter so i had students make easter decorations and i then put together a video tutorial for the channel um which is also still up on the channel um on how to make them yourselves at home now they use different pieces of felt you can use buttons you can use just embroidery threads um ribbons anything you like really to just decorate them and i made a few different styles to show you as well so the ones that i made at school were these two now they both have bunny rabbits on them one yellow one blue and they use all different stitches so i've got some lazy daisy i've got some really long stitches blanket stitch as well um as well as a running stitch and um back stitch and then on the backs of these i did both of them different so one's got some straight lines and one's got some different shapes on it and different stitches as well but they both have the bunny on the front which is what i'm really pleased about because he looks really cute um so i have those two then for the tutorial i made this one which is just another egg shape again again this one has got buttons on the front and then i've done some circles on the back to mimic the buttons and again used all my different stitches 
and then they are sewn together with a blanket stitch around the outside and they are stuffed to make them nice and puffy there is also on the tutorial there is instructions on how to make a little carrot so this one uses um, lazy daisy stitch so lazy daisy stitch when it's done individually is called lazy daisy when you join them all up it's called a chain stitch so it's slightly different but again these all use felt they always use embroidery thread um, and a little bit of ribbon to put a loop on them and then the last one because why make a carrot if you've not got anyone to eat it was a little bunny rabbit and I love the little bunny rabbit he's very cute um, and he's just got a little bow um, a little ribbon tied around his neck for a bow and it's not stitched on it is literally just tied um, but these can all be hung on a little tree um, or just hung around the home really as a little decoration which I thought was really cute so those oh there's quite a few now isn't there those were all of my Easter decorations um, and the kids at school did some really nice ones as well so that inspired me to make some more a couple more of the sewn pieces that I did were a sew together bag now I followed along with Claire from Beautiful Things over on her YouTube channel she did a sew along session for this um, I don't think I really started sewing until after she'd finished hers um, because I'd spent so long cutting everything out and I didn't have time to cut it out the night before um, but I used this really nice um, what's this called I, think, I believe it's called Lawn Art um, I can't remember the name of the company either I'll find it, I'll pop it on the bottom um, this fabric has these really cute gnomes on it it's got little squirrels there's some deer on there as well um, there's a swan plant part there's all different things on here um, so yes I made this it's called the Sew Together Bag by Sew Demented I have had to alter it slightly because my um, zip was a little bit wider so I had to change the width of my tab and if I open it up these the zip on the side acts like a little handle to hold on to it but when you open it up it's actually got three zippy pockets inside um, and obviously all the bits in between as well and then what I've actually done is filled these with lined these with a yellow print in the same design as the central ones so there are three usable zippy pockets inside and then you zip it all up and you can take that away with you now it is very easy to extend this way to make it longer so it's very useful in terms of things like knitting needles um but as it is it's pretty good for things like pencils or crochet hooks um or coloring pens or maybe some tools so i could easily put my jewelry tools in there no problem at all because they would fit perfectly and what i might look at doing is adding some i've seen one where it's got like elastic or ribbon stitched into the inside so you can slot things in so that would be quite nice as well to make sure things do stay put the only diff the only thing i have against this is that um what we did is we changed the zips so we tabbed the ends of the zips and i have tried to sew them inside as well because i wasn't sure whether they would show with the edges just being sewn together because these are all left raw inside so they're meant to be stitched together using that edge bit um and my interfacing is a little bit thicker than i needed but that's all i had at the time um but yes i'm very pleased with how it came out and i would probably make another one but i think i would tweak it just a teeny bit just to see what else um i can do with it because this isn't long enough either it should be a little bit longer so yes there are some tweaks to be made but i love the way it's quilted i love the edges of it as well these are all um just strips of fabric that you make yourself and um stitch them over the top yes so that was my sew together bag by so demented so another piece that i've made this month is a project bag it is a drawstring project bag now it is a pattern that um claire from beautiful things teaches over at bthq um i've just used an old duvet um with this graffiti print on it just to make this up i've quilted it and then it has a channel at the very top um for 
the cords that can be drawn there's also a handle so if you're a knitter or a crochet you can hold on to that can sit on your wrist and then you can knit or crochet straight from your bag what I did afterwards was then make a zippy purse to match and there is a tutorial up for this on the channel as well um, what I have done is used the small print of the pattern to do the outside and then I have just lined it in a very light blue and um, just a very simple little zippy purse just to match so that my accessories can go in there and my project can go in there those are not the only things that I have been making. Now, some of the others I don't have on my person. Um, some of them were gifts. So I made a couple of stretchy headbands um, with some buttons on for a cousin of mine because she works for the NHS um, to help her when she's wearing the masks so they don't rub against her ears all the time. Um, and I've also been working on a jacket. Now, this jacket was started in February last year and it is so close to being completed now I have Hong Kong seamed all of the seams so all of the inside seams are bound the jacket itself is supposed to be lined now it is a McCall's pattern um, I can't remember the name of the pattern I'll go find it okay so the pattern is McCall's it is M7513 and I am doing, what one am I doing? Option B, view B. So it's the same as this one, but the back is longer. And I'm using a fabric which has got tropical birds on. Um, which I believe I may have got from either Mantra Fabrics or Fabrics Galore at one of the stitching shows. I think it was Olympia actually. Um, so I made, <laughs> there is such a fiasco with this jacket. So I started making it up in February last year. Got to the point where I needed to put the sleeves in. And when I put the sleeves in, I realised it doesn't fit. Because this pattern only goes up to a size 14. And when I check the measurements, I'm not a size 14. I'm actually a little bit bigger than that. So... I think my initial planning was that I was going to trace it all out and cut out all my patterns about a half an inch bigger to allow for the bigger size because this pattern stops at size 14 and clearly was so excited to actually get it cut out and start making that I didn't add the extra seam allowance so this jacket is so very close to being finished but it will not fit me because I can't get my arms in it that is the only reason it would never do up across my bust anyway because my bust is bigger than the big or me biggest measurement on here anyway um, but at the same time my arms won't fit in it and I really didn't want to open up the armhole seams and try and fit some extra panels in there because it's just not worth the hassle of trying to do that it's, it's a little bit complicated so I think I bought the bigger pattern so that I can make it again. It has taken us nearly a year to find more fabric so that I can make another one. Um, but in the meantime, I'll pop a picture up here of what it currently looks like. A friend of mine has said she's very interested in it. Um, so I'm very happy that it is going to go to someone who will enjoy wearing it. And I look forward to making myself one in the very near future um, with the correct sizing. So... I'll put some more pictures up at the end, so things like the inside where they've done the Hong Kong Hong Kong seams, where I found them all. Um, I'll just put some pictures up at the end for you to have a look at both. Okay, so in terms of odds and sods, I have also finished the painting that I showed you last month um, that I said was going to be a gift. It now has a... I'll pop a picture up here. It now has a phoenix on the front, so I have named it Phoenix Rising, and it was shipped off as a gift to a friend as part of an exchange group, um, and it was very much well received, so I'm very happy about that. Um, just to remind you, I did this as part of a class run by Claire over at Beautiful Things. Um, it was a Zoom class where we were playing with paint, um, using watercolour paints, and just working on different backgrounds and things like that. 
as well as adding different textures on top so using just random things really so cardboard cotton buds bubble wrap um some stamps just to add some texture over the top with acrylic paint um but this one i left until last i just had the background made up with the watercolor paints and then added um some fiery elements to the bottom using the acrylic and then i went and made a stencil to put over the top using um acrylic paint <laughs> I have also been experimenting so this month because I'm trying to make up new schemes of work for my students that they can actually do at home without needing to purchase materials or try and do something textile based um, I have been looking at recycling the recycling of plastic bags so we have plenty and plenty of plastic bags I'm always one to forget to take one of those bag for life things those big plastic ones that are really durable um, to the shop so I always end up having to buy another plastic bag so we have plenty of them so what I've done is cut them into strips and then woven them all together and then what I've actually done over the top of it is ironed it to stick it all together because actually the heat melts the two layers together which is quite strange and interesting at the same time what I did find though is the very very thin plastic bags shrivel quite a lot so I'll put some pictures up at the end um, so you can see the differences between them and you'll see which ones have shriveled and which ones haven't um, it's kind of all wrinkly which is really strange but I found it really interesting to play with the different materials um, something I've not done in a while and hopefully my students will be able to replicate it themselves as well so I have two more sections to do the last, the last one in terms of makes is that I have been working on some whips so I have started a new whip which is a cross stitch piece and it is a test piece so I can't show you the pattern because I don't have a picture of the finished piece and um, that's what this is for what I can show you is what I've done so far and it doesn't really look like much what I can tell you is that the name of this pattern is called totally like totally um, and it is a toad riding a surfboard over a wave so at the moment all I've got is a surfboard and a part of the wave so there's not really much to show you um but maybe i'll get to show you this finished in the next episode that is a pattern by um rachel von habsburg and i believe that will be available on etsy once she's got all her test pattern test stitches back as well so another piece that i've been working on is a, another cross stitch piece this one was again started a very long time ago maybe even before the other ones that I've just shown you and um, this one is a tribal butterfly by Sparklies is it by Sparklies? I think so my company called Sparklies and it's meant to use hand dyed thread and hand dyed fabric what I've been doing is using a hand dyed fabric but I am using an even weave fabric and when you work with Ada fabric you stitch each of the squares is just four holes so one cross would go over four holes with even weave you can choose to do the crosses the same as you do with Ada um, so in order to make it the same size you would stitch one square becomes nine nine holes um, to make the same size stitch this will all be explained in another episode for something else um, <clears throat> This one I am doing over one. So if I come really close, I don't know if this will pick it up, but my crosses are over one strand of thread within the fabric. Um, and I'm just using a plain black cotton. Now what I will also do is put up the before photo of when I picked it up. And actually all I've managed to do is finish this top bit here of this wing and all the infills inside so there's not a great deal of progress on it but actually there's probably a good couple of hundred stitches in just that little bit there because i'm stitching over one so this is going to take some time and i can only do it when it's really good with in terms of light because it is so small and if i didn't wear glasses before i certainly do now so within my retreat bag my first retreat bag to bumblebees one I have my Cable Cow, which is designed by Carol, who works at the studio for Beautiful Things. Um, she's our knitting tutor. And I believe I started this last year, 
last Easter and hadn't really done very much of it but what I did is I balled up the yarn just after Christmas with my new Swift and Ball Winder and I've actually been making some progress on it so I'm going to show you Get the back around. so I think before I was maybe only about here yeah I think I was only about here last time so I've made quite a considerable amount of progress on this I'm quite surprised maybe I need to put a progress keeper in now and see see just how long it takes to get through I've got to make this 54 centimeters and it's quite stretchy because I'm using double Aran I didn't have any chunky yarn when I started it so I used double Aran um, and these are the giant balls you can get from Hobby 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 giant balls of yarn by the WI that you can get at Hobbycraft so I use these for my poncho as well you may have seen that in the um, in my shawls um, video and I have one in the purple and one in the is it red pinky red um those aren't the full balls of what I have left actually from the poncho there's plenty more but in order to make it a bit more manageable I kind of kind of have like half a ball left or I wound it until I couldn't really get much more on the ball winder um, behind me and then just cut it and balled up the other bit because otherwise I was going to be there forever so yes that is making some really nice progress so it's going to be really nice when it's finished and it's going to be snuggly and warm as well around my neck now I've got to go to 54 centimeters and then uh, join the two ends together so it goes around in a circle although if you're here for knitting you probably know more about that than I do because I'm not not all that clued in the last project that I have started or I'm working on um no I've only just started this one we had a Carson on party on Wednesday for the project bag she is doing a crack those whips cow for 2020 um which I believe is running until September and you can find her over on, you can find Gemma over on Instagram and also on Facebook and I learned a new technique so I am doing a couple of courses through the Centre of Excellence I have finished my Crystal Healing Diploma which I started at least a year over a year ago and um, that is now finished so I'm moving on and I've almost finished the advanced one which I'm quite pleased about and I thought well seeing as I have all this time and I do kind of want to learn how to knit a bit more I figured I would make a start on the knitting diploma that I have as well so in order to do that I found a pattern in my stash this is a pattern by Anakin Anakin Alice I've probably pronounced that really wrong it is the garden shawl um, and it is using Manos del Uruguay yarn which is this one I caked this one up a little while ago uh, this one is called Tanat T-A-N-N-A-T um, so that is that colourway it's got some purples, blues, pinks there's some taupe colours in there some navy colours in there it's just a really nice autumn autumn mix really I know right, but I like that so in order to start it says to cast on with a stretchy cast on and I've not done that before I've done a stretchy cast off before when I did my cuddle bum shawl so as part of my knitting diploma it actually has the long tail cast on which I've not done before and I'm rather pleased with myself because I did it and it looks like absolutely nothing because it is just a cast on and it's just lots of loops of yarn around the needle but that is ready for me to start working on my pattern so I'm so very pleased about that um, and I am going to enjoy working on it as well because the yarn is lovely and it just glides through my hand so that one is cast on and ready to work on when I feel like testing my knowledge and skills for a knitting pattern that I've not done before it's not cables like I thought it was it's lots of yarn overs and that is going to be my challenge so we shall see how we get on with this one this month as well 
and this one is living in my this one was a gift this is a little pikachu it was a tiny project bag for me to work with because it's only one ball and it should fit quite nicely last up is acquisitions and there's not many because we're in lockdown and i really shouldn't be buying stuff so this popped up i think on my facebook page might have been my no facebook it popped up on facebook and this is a company called pretty little stickers and the initial thing that caught me was this really cute pin badge and it says i like big balls and i cannot lie and it's just got a yarn ball in the middle and my camera will not focus on it so i'll put a picture up here um and i actually bought two of these one for me and one for my friend emma um they're little pin badges so they can go on our project bags and i also picked up a little project bag with these sparkly yarn balls at the very bottom um so i just need another project ready to fill that one as well don't i um yes and i'm really pleased with these these are really cute and it's got a really strong zip on it and she even threw in some little rainbow stickers too so vicky brown of vicky brown designs has been doing a 100 skeins challenge and i have managed to acquire one now it kind of reminds me of strawberries and cream and i'll show you why well you'll see why look at that color there are slight flecks of the white but it's a really super super soft yarn it is 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon it is dk and there is 100 grams of it and it's just super super squidgy and soft and I have the perfect pattern to work this up into as well because I think where it's got the little speckles of the lighter colours, they might show up really nicely in a very, very simple um is it like a cow? Yeah, very, very simple cow pattern that I've got, which is in stocking stitch, so that will help me practice my stocking stitch as well. Um yeah, I can't stop playing with it. Um, and she was also kind enough to send me a couple of minis as well which I think complement really nicely actually so I've got this really beautiful purple colour and this is called Grape Soda so that's really pretty there's a couple of blue tints in there as well very light blues I've got growth on it um, and then this one is called Crayon Box which is so so pretty with all those colours in there as well so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those, but they do go quite nicely with the pink. So maybe I'll have to add some stripes into my cow as well. We shall see. But they're super pretty. So Vicky Brown has been doing a 100 skeins challenge. So she has dyed 100 skeins of yarn, each one completely different and each one unique and not repeatable, which I think is an amazing amazing challenge to do and i'm hoping it has very much inspired her to make some more as well and keep up with the dying pop. now the other thing i picked up was i picked up i ordered and it was dropped off with me i if you remember from last month i finished off my crochet jumper my perfectly pom jumper from simply crochet or crochet now magazine um I can't remember um yes i finished off my crochet jumper and although i like the stripes i think i would get more use out of it if it was all in one color and as i didn't actually use much of the purple that i bought for it i still had two full balls and pretty much a full ball left over um of the three that i bought so i ordered another five because i actually only used eight skeins of yarn or eight balls of yarn for the jumper instead of the proposed 12 that it says on the pattern and so i've ordered another five of the purple um in the mulberry color so that i can do another one so yes i've ordered another five in the purple this is the king cole timeless chunky this is the almost empty ball well the almost full ball um that i used for my 
previous jumper. So I have seven full balls and then this one almost full ball. Because um, this one was only used for a couple of rows on both the front and the back and then used to join everything up. So there's actually almost a full ball. It's not quite a full ball. But I'm hoping there will be just enough to make another one. Because I've still got loads left over from the others that I used as well. And that is the colour Mulberry. Timeless Chunky. It is 90% premium acrylic and 10% alpaca. So it's a 90-10. So I also ordered a couple of pairs of scissors. Now, I'm very much one of those people that will buy one from me and then also buy one for my friends. So I bought the last two and they're these really cute scissors. They have got a yarn ball in the middle. So I will know exactly what they're for and no one can steal them. And that is all of my whips, my finishes, my acquisitions for April. I'm not sure what May will hold because we still don't know what's going on um, in terms of, well in terms of much really. No one really knows when we'll be let out of lockdown. No one really knows what life will be like after lockdown and so we're all just trying to keep ourselves very much busy and mentally sane I guess. Um, that means that I have produced quite a lot of projects or finished a lot of projects this month um, I've also thrown myself into making up some tutorials I've also worked on some new schemes of work for um, my students for when we do go back to school and yeah not very much else is actually going on it sounds like I've been really productive for March not March we've just done April I've been very productive for April but actually the last couple of days all I've wanted to do is sit down and read so that is what I have done um, just to call me back into relaxing I guess but I've worked out that I'm not stressed because I have nails I never have fingernails I mean, look they're so long and yet I can't paint them because I'm rubbish at painting my nails so we need to get out of lockdown very soon so that these can be sorted and actually like stay and not be ripped off later because I've cracked one. I'm not very good at cracking off nails. Um, yes. Not really much else to go over. So I have my two knitting projects to work on. I've got a couple of cross stitch projects to work on. So even if I just got those finished for the next month, I'd be quite happy. I do feel like I need to crack on with my temperature blanket because it still hasn't had any work done on it since probably the last time I showed you. Um, but those are my main things at the moment. I'm practicing my knitting so they've kind of become priority or at least top of my list as opposed to my old cross uh, crochet projects. So once I've got these out of the way then I will most certainly have to crack on with my larger projects because I can't do the blankets when it is warm out because it is just boiling. The temperature blanket is almost king size already and it's only halfway done. So I am in no rush to sit under it for hot weather. Anyway, right. Time to get this one on the editing block. So it was very much, very much nice to see you all. I hope you are keeping well and safe and staying in unless you really 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 must go to work um, or go to things like shopping uh, to pick up on your essentials so i will see you all again very soon um i hope you've enjoyed seeing what i've been getting up to um i hope you've been liking the tutorials that i've put up and remember to share with me what you've been making as well because i'd really like to see how you are dealing with this situation too we are all in this together we all need to stay strong and we will all see each other on the other side. So thank you for watching and bye.